Okay. Perfect. So how are you doing today? Good. Tell me tell me a bit about yourself and like your university and what you're studying and absolutely. So I currently attend Longwood University. I'm a communications major with a concentration in digital media. Okay. And this is for a class called Citizen 110 in uh, social issues in film. And I'm doing a project just breaking down a whole movie. And if it's progressive or traditional and, you know, what ideologies does it project? Right. And where are you based? This is based in Farmville, Virginia in the United States. Okay. I'm in Brooklyn. So oh, Brooklyn. States. A couple, like, four hours away. Uh, yeah. I'm far. So you can tell by my accent. <laughs> Lovely. Yeah, so as the director of Finding Ophelia, personally, one of my favorite movies, it was amazing. Seen it multiple times. Oh, wow. So what inspired you to make the movie, Mr. Rutherford? I think I've always wanted to make a film. And there were sort of technically, I guess Christopher Nolan was one inspiration that he spent a year making a feature film. So it, it seemed more doable to make, you know, have the process over the year. Um, so I guess listening to music was a big thing, uh, sort of in the ideation of the, of the film. So kind of uh, music I was listening to was quite ethereal in that. So and I was kind of half asleep and like, in this kind of dream state when I was thinking of ideas and stuff for the for the film. So seems I quite like the idea of dreams and um almost like other realms and other dimensions to the universe. So I quite like when those two worlds kind of collide or like one world is trying to reach the other kind of thing. And you can really see that from the film uh, with the visions of Ophelia through Will Streams. Mm -hmm. uh, when did the screenwriting uh, process start for the movie? I don't know what year it was now, but it was it's pretty much I wrote the script into production because I knew I was going to, I had all the equipment to shoot myself. So once I had a, a lead actor, I could get going, but it probably took me about three months to actually write the script. And then probably before that, maybe, you know, sort of coming up with ideas for what the film could be sort of came over maybe a longer period of time. Um, so I just made sure I had the ideas first, rearranged them, kind of got the structure down. And then before I even started, you know, typing, as it were, it took a good three months of typing for sure months so through the whole movie were you trying to reflect any recent aspects of uh culture happenings maybe like the opioid epidemic uh through will's um you know ways of managing his prescription um uh, by dr ali hope you know about him abusing it yeah um i think i don't think that was inspirational i think that was just like his character was just falling, was spiraling downwards. So he was just grabbing any vices on along the way to cope with what he was going through. Um, obviously, he was in a successful position, but was in this downward spiral. The beginning of the film is kind of like this hallucinogenic uh, dream that he has that kind of overtakes his life so that everything in his life is not... The important things are no longer important anymore, so... Mm -hmm. I think the drugs was just kind of a part of that downward spiral. He was already psychologically damaged, I think, from from the visions. Were you trying to reflect any aspect of maybe your personal life through Will's uh, character? Maybe any events in childhood that inspired Will to like down spiral, like to maybe think of Ophelia have those visions? I don't know. I think. I mean, I wrote the character to be in advertising because that's what I did before I worked in advertising. So there's definite, a definite parallel there between 
me starting to not care anymore and like getting fired. <laughs> um, so it's a bit, yeah, a bit of a mirror there, but I was just trying to write a character that I would know and I know all the lingo of that industry kind of thing. Um, so I think they're probably like certain negative emotions I was feeling at, at the time. Was, this is all before COVID. So I, I almost felt like I had like one or two years of just like being in the house by myself, just kind of moved to a different neighborhood and then felt quite isolated. So there's probably some kind of theme, I think, in, in the film about once being plugged into everything and then suddenly you're by yourself. And so psychologically, I think there's some parallels, but I didn't kind of realize that at the time. But I think in hindsight, maybe the, there's parts of you in there kind of thing. So Very interesting. So Ophelia is a literal reference to Shakespeare's character in Hamlet. Were you trying to also push an idea of maybe a different metaphoric meaning to Ophelia? Yeah, I think so. I think originally um, it was quite a surface level connection really between Hamlet and the character because it was just the name was the only link in her the Ophelia. Um, I guess it's kind of like a a trap really to say that she's an Ophelia character which is almost kind of like a meek and it's it's almost the opposite of her real persona kind of thing so it's almost like a trap that she's this innocent drowning kind of girl when in fact she's evil and kind of a succubus <laughs> yeah the, the ending really <laughs> throws you off um so talking about Ophelia you know the iconic butterfly tattoo mm -hmm. um throughout the movie i really saw the butterfly tattoo as very calming and you know the idea of peace and finding peace you know because of the scenes of um where it was filmed it was very open very calm background um so with that and the fact that i'm, I'm guessing you're married because through text you said that you're going to pick up your kids right yeah, not to, not for a while. No, this alarm was for this meeting because it was, I started a bit early. Uh, we we did start a little bit early. <laughs> Would you say that you were trying to push for the idea of like the butterfly being somewhat of a peace symbol, originally like attracting Ophelia? Is that? Um, is that where it came from? It was definitely growing because I had originally, whether it was obvious or not, we had like the caterpillar people at the beginning, which was almost like a reveal of her last name, Monarch. Um, and it's in through, it's like threaded throughout the film, like in pretty much every scene there's a butterfly in there, like in pictures in the background. and mm -hmm. But it was kind of to do with, I think, like metamorphosis and and change all, and all that kind of like one creature becoming another which kind of leads up to the the final, the ending there's yeah, yeah more of a metamor metamorphosis 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 <laughs> yeah i i never thought about it um that have been the question why was uh bringing your kids along with this i was thinking like were you married at the time uh while you were recording the film yeah yeah did you find you know maybe like the piece like are you in peace, you know, once you found your wife? Because in a way, Will kind of found peace that he finally found Ophelia at the end of the movie. For himself. Did you find yourself when you um, found your wife? He got what he wished for, but it wasn't a good, it wasn't a good thing. Mm -hmm. So, I yeah, I don't think it was about peace personally, but I mean, I kind of wanted to leave it quite open to so people would have their own interpretation. So it's interesting that you have a different take on it and that other people have different thoughts. But personally, I didn't. It was more like a metamorphosis type of symbol, but mm -hmm. different cultures and that will look into it differently, I would think. Mm -hmm. With another heavy symbol in the movie, the circles and the, um, do you doubt that scene in the Metro with the girl eating the newspaper? We're trying to fire some shots maybe at media. Like, do you believe what the media says? A little bit, although that this is all before that all kicked off, I think. 
Um, I think it was more, it was her communicating through any means necessary through symbols and anything that he saw, whether it be the media or drawings on the ground or like, it was just seeing recurring sim symbols. So it's kind of like, if you see the color red and then you go out into the day, you'll see red everywhere. So it's like kind of something from another dimension that is trying to communicate. So I think she's reaching out to him, giving him clues, which, you know, the first dream, the first two dreams he has, one is like of water and and kind of very abstract and you don't really see her. There's a bit of butterfly and stuff. The second dream is super abstract. So we don't even, we barely know if it's a girl or not, which kind of works like dreams, you know, first they become very soft and gradually come into focus. So she's just trying to, reach out to him from another dimension in you know through the media or through symbols and signs that he comes across absolutely fascinating um uh, the whole aspect of the dreams you know as you said like the beginning with the water then you know later on with the circles and you know the do you doubt that it, it was one of my favorite aspects of the movie and that i felt like you left it very open as you were saying earlier for the crowd to really determine like what does this mean because mm -hmm. you know there could be thousands of different meanings for yeah each of yeah. those streams so what was your favorite aspect of uh the film itself and the project um i think sort of creatively for me uh, i worked in advertising for a long time so any work you work on anything you work on always gets uh, criticized to death and kind of like the lack of creative freedom can be kind of constricting. So this is the first time I could really unleash and just do whatever you liked because it was a low budget film. Essentially you have no producers or anything or anyone telling you what to do. So it was kind of, for me, it's a real cathartic process kind of thing doing exactly what you want to do. I kind of wanted to write the type of film that Hollywood would never buy, you know, just as outrageous as I could make it. And I, I thought writing it, on when, when you see the script, it just looks like, how am I going to make this? Or how, or this is just too ridiculous. But when when it becomes a film, it just almost feel, felt like I could push it even further to be even more crazier. You know, once it's executed, it feels... Like you could have gone harder. <laughs> what was uh, the budget for the film, if you mind me asking? I think I shot it for probably, I'm going to say like $15,000. But wow. a lot of that was my time, which is I'm really expensive. So. <laughs> Fair enough. So like a year of work. Probably it took like, you know, four months of editing every day. So to I kind of learn those things. You know, I was quite new to learning those kind of tools and software and stuff like that. So if I'd have hired someone to do that, it would have been a lot more money, I guess. But The editing was... The promoting really of it is the hard thing. You know, promoting the film is like the hardest. I thought editing was the hardest bit. Like Once I've shot it, I thought, yeah, I'm like halfway done now. I've just got to edit. But that was like about four months of just pain. It was a very painful process. But... What was harder on top of that was getting, I got a distribution, which was really lucky. Um, so it's on Amazon Prime TV. There's like a YouTube channel from the studio. So it's, yeah, it's like on all these channels, but um, the, unless you keep promoting the film that like, it's hard to see unless you have like a super famous actor or 30 million of uh, advertising behind it. So I did a lot of probably like a year or year and a half, probably of just like promoting advertising, social media, all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. But that was a massive learning uh, process. So that that was a hard bit, but also fun. I enjoyed I'm that. really glad that your marketing got to me and that I ended up uh, watching this movie. Um, I learned about the project 
I think once you won, uh, I forgot which award, the Cannes Film Awards you won, right? Yeah, I won a lot of awards. Although I, I'm not sure it, that doesn't really, it's almost like a different audience to the one, like if you want to promote to the general public, it's almost like another whole audience. So I'm not sure the awards do you that much favours, but I did meet some really interesting people and who mm -hmm. I want to collaborate with next. So, but uh, yeah, the, it did well for awards, for sure. I think it has 30 plus. How did you come across it? Like, um, Just uh, reading uh, articles and after you started following me in my page and, you know, saying like, oh, oh yeah. you're the director of a movie, then <laughs> I started looking more into the movie and I'm like, wow. Then I just freshly had the opportunity to do a project on a um, movie that was recently released. And I'm like, I know exactly which movie I'm going to do. Hmm movie because i really want to show out more to the general public uh the world of obscure cinema in a way right very more low budget films uh yeah. more independent directors well i think there's like um we'll probably won't realize it until a few years but i think right now people are just making or can't you know this is the first time i wanted to make a film for a really long time but now is the time they can physically anyone can has a camera and anyone can edit and so it's a great time to not be dictated to by movie studios or that kind of stuff you can pretty much do what you want so I think within that there'll be tons of terrible films but like there'll be a chunk of films that are coming out that probably no one has ever seen that are going to be really great to help mm -hmm. that so absolutely time to to do it I think I followed your Instagram because it was a Rick Owens. I probably pretty much follow anything Rick Owens based. <laughs> so I was it, thinking, it is a Rick Owens meme page. It has kind of died off since uh, I started <laughs> knowledge, but yeah, I mean, absolute fashion icon. I've seen a bunch of your photos in your Instagram too, so it's really interesting. And I've seen uh, the new project. I forgot the name, but it's you know it has very much of an avant garde sort of look to it uh do you have any words on your upcoming project yeah that was just a short film and it's just like a fashion film collaboration uh with a friend i worked with her last year and this time i wanted to do more of a have more of a story to it so it's kind of a weird uh uh it's a bit piece of cheese that talks to her and convinces her to it's like Alice in Wonderland type of thing. And if you eat uh, cheese before bed, and I want Rick Owens to be in it. I don't know if we can get him to. <laughs> Hopefully. He, he comes into her dream and says, like, don't eat cheese before bed because, you know, it gives you nightmares. But the nightmares are all these crazy um, avant-garde fashion looks kind of thing. And then she wakes up in the morning and then her head is just made of cheese. <laughs> quite the interesting project really looking forward for it um and hopefully you get you know rick on board that'd be great and also david lynch i would like to be the cheese so those are my goals we'll see if we get it. <laughs> hopefully you will <laughs> so back to uh the movie what was your favorite scene overall in the movie hmm. i think the chicken fight was definitely the funniest thing I've ever done. Like just yeah. crying my eyes out filming that. Just so much fun um, and ridiculous. And also like vomiting in the streets with people still ignore it. Like people walking past. Like in New York, you can just film on the street of people kind of ignore you. I think we did have an ambulance show up at one point, but they went away. <laughs> but, um, those are fun. All the kind of like water stuff at the beginning. Because it was just like super hot. It, he was shivering, but it was actually like super hot water. Um, what else? And filming like... Um, it was all fun. Just like the... Like the jail and the hospital and all that kind of stuff. It's made the movie seem big and we filmed most of that in a day because we found some studios in uh, Florida so we just flew down there and shot like five scenes wow. that was cool 
And the, the whole because process was fun. I'm guessing that majority of the film was filmed in New York, especially the street scenes uh, until later, like the hospital, I guess that was uh, where it was in Florida, right? Yeah. Yeah. You know, based on the architecture. And most of the streets of New York, which is a big movie set. It really makes a film feel bigger and so many places you can really shoot that, that epic, you know? Aspect on the Let budget. <laughs> go back to my notes of the movie. I ended up taking like three pages worth of notes uh, while um, reading the movie. So in the beginning, the water scene, the first stream, was that a reference to the, uh, I forget, God, how to even pronounce the test, uh, the psychology test of the ink splatter, you know. Oh, the uh, Rorschach. Yeah, R Rorschach. Yeah, there's definitely that kind of imagery within it so you could read, read into it. But a lot of it is to do with water. It's like a clue, you know, the first clue is kind of water and that. But yeah, definitely like some of those cloud images, you can see all these faces in there. And so, yeah, it's definitely kind of like a setup for like, this is how the movie is going to go. It's going to be psychological. And I think like some people, I think some people will turn off by then. So like, if you keep going by the end of that crazy opening, I think you're in for the right, you know, it's your kind of movie. Absolutely. Because it, it was like a solid three minutes of waves. I, I could see how that could drive, you know, majority yeah. of the public off, but it really warms you up. Great for the movie. And I think um, I was always trying to, you know, almost mesmerize people into a dream. So like, if you watch this, it should be probably late at night. Late at night, you probably had a scotch. You're kind of like zoning in on this film. Like you, you kind of want to watch it in a dreamlike state almost. Got some weird filter on this thing. Well, little did I know that I watched a movie in the perfect state then. Okay. I was watching it late at night with a, with a glass of whiskey, indeed. Yeah, yeah perfect. There you go. But, yeah. I should get a whiskey sponsor next time. Hopefully. <laughs> but, Coral, thank you so much for the opportunity to interview you for free because, as you said, your time is very much valuable and I'm looking <laughs> so much forward for your next project. Oh, cool, man. Well, thanks for the interest. It's good to know people are still watching it out there. I need to like promote it more, but it's uh, I'll have to think of other ways to do that more effective, I think, because uh, social media, you have to like pay tons of money for, to oh, advertise yeah. now, I think. so. Absolutely. Think well, hopefully that. my class will watch uh, the movie now and you'll have oh, cool. yeah, that'd be cool. 20 to 30 people watching the movie and I'll do my yeah. job of advertising it through my Oh, because I, I feel like people definitely need to see this movie it's wonderful thank you very much oh. cool it's great to meet you if you have any other questions or whatever, just message me or whatever absolutely will do thank you so much once again and you have a wonderful day all right you too man all right, take ciao. care